Hey there, boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today, Duff Dog and I are going to see if we can't get a 1956 Cadillac running again that ain't been on the road since 1969. So Trevor, who is 58, we worked on, put that Mustang front suspension and stuff on it. Thought I'd throw a quick video together about this 58 Chevy pickup that I put together for my friend Trevor. He said uh, his grandma had a big Cadillac sitting in her garage. So let's check her out. We came here this winter and couldn't get the door open. We could peek through there and we could just see the taillights of this car, but I guess his dad is Helped get this door open, so apparently he enjoyed a latte while he was at it. But there it is. All of its glory. They took the back bumper off to fit it in here because she's tight up against the front. And you can see that tail fin. She's right up to the door. Oh, man. Last tagged in 69. So this thing's been off the road for 52 years. We did notice they had a set of salt bag on the trunk. So that is really unfortunate. I threw that off when we got in here this winter. I'm not even sure what year this thing is. Do the old taillight trick, 54. Maybe they used those taillights for a couple years. I was guessing it was like 54 to 56. Not a Cadillac expert. So the story is, this was kind of his great uncle's car. He remembers riding around in it. Had hydraulic windows and such, or electric, whatever. I guess they parked it because the engine was tired in a different building, and then they found a different engine that sat by it. His great uncle since has passed, and the building was kind of getting dilapidated, so they put it in this building like in the 80s, and they threw that engine away. So we don't have the engine. I don't know where the rear bumper's at, so who knows if this thing's gonna be loose, if it's gonna run, what the story is, but I mean, a pink Cadillac four-door, couldn't pass it up. Let's get this thing out of here. Hopefully we can get that door open just a little bit further. See what other kind of goodies we can get. I see a 48 and a 49 license plate on the wall. It's a shame we don't have the rear bumper. The front one's got the sweet Dagmars. Just some Kitty scratching in the back window, climbing around. Ooh, that's a big poop right there. Let's get her out of here. Ugh. Got it. Well, be cool if we could go like another eight inches. Set up the tripod and do it to it.
So I gotta get this thing to roll better than it is now, because I think that wheel's the only one turning. So I'm gonna do my brake job trick, but oh, this might have left hand threads, because see how they got the R on the studs? What do you think? You're not impressed with the Cadillac Duff. No? Do you want to check it out? Take a take a peek. See what you think. Oh, you are all about it. Pretty good in there. I beg to differ. There's some smells, huh? Oh man, is that all scratches in the glass from critters? No, that's just dust that got wet. Oh, just taking it all in, huh? All right, I'm gonna get these brakes loose. So if you're not aware of how I loosen stuck brakes, I take my torch and just snip a ring out right there. And uh, it upsets a few people because these brake drums are probably really hard to get, but see how that's rusted off? And uh, these are, oh yeah, look at that. The drums are already splitting from rust. So we're not ruining anything. It looks like somebody I already started cutting into it with a side cutter or something, but this thing's wasted. Well, this drum is. The car, it's got a lot of undercoating on it yet, but she's, uh, hasn't been stored well. That is a bulky rear end. And the tailpipe's rotted off. All right, I'm gonna snippy snip the brakes. Don't cry. So when you get done with the brakes, you throw them all in a box for the next guy. So that tells you how stuck these brakes were. That was the lining, and I had to chisel that right out of the brake drum. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Oh man, you're gonna go check it out. There's a lot of poop back there, Duff. Be careful. That's a lot of poop. Stay out of the poop. Still shuts like 1969. So this brake's frozen. I'll show you how to loosen them up without a torch. Maybe. Here goes nothing. Oh, look at that dust cap. It's got the spring in it to push all the grease right back in there or something. If you know what that spring is for inside the dust cap on a Cadillac, let me know. It's got a patent number on it. Purvis blade to push the washer out of there. Oh man, got my knife all greasy. Now we're gonna use this handy dandy hub puller. Let's see if we can yank that son of a biscuit right off there. If you want to see how not to do it, go check out Iowa Classic Car Ryan. He likes wailing on with a sledgehammer. Gonna need some safety glasses. That's how you get a roll right there, guys. A BFH and, uh, and a lot of force. Well, I mean, he swings it like a girl, but there's that. Now, we just give the old meat and potatoes with the BDBH here. Cool tool of the day, this handy tool that grabs onto your dust cap, pries it off, and you can tap her back on too. I don't know what that's for, prying her on the edge of it. I think Lyle sells them. You don't need that spring. Steel brakes off to the side. 
and that drum doesn't even look too bad it might clean up yeah wheel bearings i don't know what was it i know 59 used ball bearings like this and they're super expensive instead of needle bearings it's kind of nice to save those if you can i'm sure they're good for another hundred thousand again if you got something super common like a 62 chevy bel air bubble top that you can get new drums for it's probably not a big deal or if you're going to go to disc brakes or place the rear axle or whatever but i'm guessing brake drums for this car are pretty much unobtainium so if you can save them great and sometimes when they come off they're just chewed up and rotten but pretty quick what does it take five ten minutes to pop them off like that if you got one of these pullers Plus, if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you don't want to start a fire, this is way better. Or you just don't have a torch. I guess you'd have to buy that pole. Though. One eternity later. Got it rolling, and uh, we're gonna roll it in the shop now. We gotta pump up some tires. Looks like that one held there. I think they're both flat on this side. She's uh, she's sitting pretty low. Oh, Duff. Oh, Duff got a step van. What do you guys think about step vans? Pretty awesome. Duff doesn't think so. Good thing we got the mobile mortar ski rig since nobody's bought this yet to pump up the tires so i'm gonna fire this up you pump up them tires gosh dang this thing is handy hopefully it starts is the 300 gonna go no we're not going for a ride we just gotta get it running chokey choke ah we don't need no choke sure enough A lot of people were wondering why the choke moves when you pump the gas. It's got a uh, throttle lock on it, or a hand throttle. I don't know. More choke? Compressor on. Look at that son of a biscuit go, Duff. She cranks. Needs a hose reel, though. Tell you what, that F two fifty, she is a dependable rig. Let's take a closer look at the old Elvis impersonator here. She was pretty damp in that building, his dirt floor, so it looks so good, okay, goodish up here, but um, down there, not so much. Not too many whiskey dents on this side. From leaning over the hood or walking on it, there's a couple of dents up there. Gold, I thought that was only on like 57 Chevy Bel Airs. When did Cadillac start putting gold emblems? Duff don't know either. She's had some uh, 
pink lipstick put on her over the years in the form of uh, rattle cans. Henry, too terrible. I like how they painted it two colors. Everybody thinks it's a pink Cadillac, but actually it's pink and white. Check her out, Duffelopagus. That steel that's painted, oh yeah. The interior, I mean like the door panels and stuff. Even the seats ain't that bad. I'm guessing that's legit leather. Oh yeah, remote mirror. Power winders. Oh, got the seat all the way ahead. Must have been a short feller. Radio, 1956. Even says it right in the dash. Padded dash. Ain't in bad shape. 69,006 miles. Heater switch for the fans over there. What's this? Oh, headlights. Wipers. Air vents. Lighter. Was he a smoker? Nope. Anything in the glove box? I get it open. More stations. Pretty neat radio. What did you find in here to eat? Oh, some type of animal vertebrae. That must be the power seat switch. Uh, 66 111 must have been important. Floorboards uh, were not important. Pretty neat two tone steering wheel. Got all his oil change records. From uh, Park Shell Service, St. Louis Park, Minnesota. He did some at the Sinclair station as well. Why don't they do cool stuff like that anymore? This thing got around. Oh, that's a lot of poop. I don't think we're going back there. Ashtray in the back and your own cigarette lighter so the kids can rip darts in the back. Vents in the back seat. Oh, that door panel ain't so nice. There's some solid doors. They don't shut that great, but looks like he wiped out the tail fin, quarter panel, gills on this side. This tail light and backup light. Oh, that backup light was taped together long before it was parked. This side ain't so bad. Those are those gills on the side there. Oh, you can see a little more rattle can action there. Must have had skirts. I think they look dumb without skirts. It's got that lip there. These two doors are uh, shoved in pretty good. It was tight in that building, so I don't know if they did that putting it in. I don't think we did it going out. That does kind of look fresh, but I don't think that was us. Triple A member, we should call him up. Right, look at that huge stainless piece that goes around the windshield. Cowl vent, it's freaking ginormous. Too bad she's so chewy. There's some stainless missing on that door. There's a lot of good pieces here for somebody fixing one up. Those Dagmars, those things are tits, literally. And you got the naked gal riding the hood there. Missing the center of that emblem. Oh yeah. God, these things were just sweating style. Let's see what we got in the trunk. Big old chunk of poopy still just hanging out up there. You got a full size spare. I'll show you something neat. It looks like the centers are stamped in backwards on these Cadillac wheels. Well, there's your rivets. But they're kind of a factory reversed wheel and a lot of hot rod guys would take and knock these centers out and put like a Ford center in it because they got this dipped in area in there. So they look pretty swanky when you reverse them. Tech tip of the day. I guess now is the cable he was pulling himself out of the ditch with. What's this? Like a 53 ish Chevy horn cap. Ooh, look at her. Ponytail. Give her a call. She's got a corded phone yet, it looks like. I'm gonna have to hang that up. Bachelor things. What are these? Oh, we're ready for an overhaul. New old stock GM gaskets. What are they? Intake, exhaust. 
I bet they're exhaust. Well, it's stuck together like somebody did you know what. Intake gaskets, steel intake gaskets? Weird. I don't think that cork valve cover gasket's any good anymore. Maybe. Do not bend. Keep in a cool, dry place. Yeah. Well, it didn't get bent, but it was not in a dry place. Sweet. New pair of head gaskets. Oh, we're ready to overhaul this thing. Oh. Blew out the bottom. This thing's... Kinds of goodies in here. Brand new 15 inch tube. Well, 50 year old, brand new. Yeah, you can see uh, tail pans is kind of hanging on my hopes and dreams here. They finished out all the trunks in these cars. It's got those nice cardboard inserts. These things were a little bit classier than their other GM counterparts. It's too bad they set salt block on the deck lid. Looks like we're going with a little summer shandy this week. Stay hydrated, right Duff? Hey, is that hubcap the right one, Duff? <laughs> Picked this up at Iola. Son of a biscuit, I think we guessed right. It's got this one oddball guy back here, so. Should be good to go. Well, let's rip into this thing. I've had it sitting here a while, and I just can't get excited about it because it's going to be stuck for sure. Sitting in that building, it was humid in there. This car's pretty soggy underneath, so I feel like that humidity just got in the engine. It ain't going to be good, but I think it was an oil burner when they parked it, so maybe we'll be surprised. What do you think, Duff? She gonna be stiff as a brick? Well, you gonna open that hood or what? Here we go. Getting pretty good at this. Duff said, check out the naked lady on the hood ornament though. Kinda like a class. Oh, we're missing the insert there. Even had insulated hoods in the 50s on Cadillacs. I feel like GM was not doing that. You don't want that? I bet it smells good. Uh, the owner's identification card isn't here. It's pretty neat though. How neat is that? What? A battery mat? The battery don't sit up here, does it? Where's the battery cables at? Where does the battery sit? There's one battery cable. Oh, it sat back there. What's that for? Fuel line. Uh. Uh. Okay. Well, let's get some of this debris out of here and then see if we can't put a bar on the crankshaft, seeing as we don't have a belt on the fan to turn. What do we need? Oh, it does have a bolt on it, at least. Oh man, the inner fender. Chewy. Well, here goes nothing. I think there's about a five, five and a half percent chance it turns. Just the bolt tightening up. Well, let's pull the plugs out, put some oil in there, see how the plugs look, and then jack this thing up, and hopefully there's an inspection cover. Otherwise, I think we're gonna be pulling the heads off. I just, I don't have a good feeling about this thing. Let's see what the plugs look like. Hey, at least that comes off easy. Oh, no, that boot just popped right off. This ain't good. Look at how rusty the hexes are on the plugs. I 
hope these come out. That one ain't so bad. This one must have had water dripping on it all the time. That sucker rounds off. We are gonna be in for a long ride. How rusty are these ones? Not too bad. Let's see if they come out. She's pretty rusty. That one ain't so bad. Yep, there's the one I figured would round off. I've seen but it ain't good either so since this one's pretty much half stripped off I suppose we can pound a three-quarter sock down there if we get a deep enough one let's see if we can smash that on there I wonder if that's gonna hold doesn't even look all that bad just rusty on the outside give him a little uh, Keith Benoit croil now we just got to do the same thing on the other side oh the mice has chewed that one off no worries about wrecking that one Pulled that one right out of the boot. Just oh. come off there already. One piece at a time. Getting this old spark plug wire off. Kind of like the Johnny Cash song. Wasn't that about a Cadillac? One piece at a time and it didn't cost me a dime. That one's real good. It's had power steering fluid leaking on it his whole life. Just out of curiosity, well, you know what that did to the cat. We're gonna stick our probe in there, see what it looks like in them cylinders. Before we spray them down with oil on this side. See what we got. That piston's at about top dead center. And there's a lot of crap in there. Well, oh, this one. Well, the camera's upside down. You can see all the rust that fell to the bottom of that one, but. Oh, not look too bad. We got some cobwebs in it. So clearly the intake was open. I'm guessing that's how the spider got in there. Well, it could be the exhaust. I don't know. Spiders like it in the exhaust. Oh, intake. 
Yeah, Duff says intake. How about the front cylinder? Oh, just about top dead center too. So I mean, they don't look too bad. This third one from the front looks the worst. That one's also almost that top dead center, so. So that one was the one that the intake was just opening up on. I'm gonna go look at the other side, see what I see. A lot of rust in there. Yuck. That one's at the top, not much to see. Well, the Teslong uh, borescope has told us that I don't think it's worth prying on. I think we're gonna have to pull the heads off. I don't have any extra Cadillac parts. Ah, I, I lied. I picked up another engine, so I do have some pieces. Why are the hose clamps missing on that? Hmm. Well, maybe we'll take this and we'll go stick it down the uh, boards of that other engine I got. See what that one looks like. Because I'm gonna swap. No, I'm not gonna swap an engine for this thing. I think we'll get that one running on the floor and I'll save that engine for something cool. Cooler than a 56 Cadillac. Like an open wheel Ford Hot Rod. Like a 289 Model A Roadster maybe? I don't know. So I think uh, we'll start ripping this thing down. Pull the top end off because... Yeah, I'm guessing we're going to need to get some stuff on stock and get some stuff cleaned out. See what we got. Fallout spells. We got a really sweet battling air cleaner for our collection to go on same said Model A Roadster. Like we'll ever find one of those. Ugh. What are we gonna do to get this fancy four jet carburetor off? Oh, somebody robbed the coil. They always steal the coil, even though the coil's never bad on whatever they're working on. Why do people do that? some line wrenches. Well, we don't have to pull the carburetor off, do we? No, we don't. What should we take off first? Valve covers or the intake? Or the accessories? I don't know. I've never ripped into a Cadillac before. Maybe we should jack it up, try prying underneath stuff? I don't think it's going to work. And no amount of soaking is going to make a difference. <laughs> Duff, Duff agrees, no amount of soaking is going to make a difference. Let's jack it up, see what we got for an inspection cover underneath, because we're going to have something to pry on it once we get everything apart. Maybe it'll go? Okay, we'll try it. Things are not looking good under here either. Did notice uh, she was touched up with some spray paint at some point. Got a few uh, flow checks, sags, curtains. What do you call those, Duff? I call them runs, but some people got fancy terms for them. I gotta show the people underneath the car. So uh, that kind of sums up the body on this thing. Because there's a, the inside of the car. It's kind of like a periscope down here. Oh yeah, it's missing the keys. I forgot about that. So a lot of the times there's a inspection cover right here you can pop off. You can pry on the flex plate it would be on an automatic. Well, the only thing I could see is this little cooler thing or where the tranny cooler lines come out. You can see one on each side. So I don't think that's going to get us much. And plus the ring gear is going to be way up here. There's an inspection cover we can take off at the front, but they're not really much fun to pry on. Here's where things get interesting. See that uh, frost plug hole? Yeah, there should be a plug in that. So I don't know if they froze out or rusted out or somebody knocked them out before they parked it. And by they, it's both sides. Starter looks nice and rusty too, so I mean, that's a plus. 
Yeah, this is some type of tranny cooler, something or other over here. Oh, and it's not a cover, it's just bolted to the bell housing. So there's no way for us to pry on this thing, feasibly. And then we'd have to knock in frost plugs, which uh, that's kind of tight quarters. The steering box and the manifold over here. This side's pretty open though. But it looks like they're kind of an oddball stepped frost plug. What are you smelling? Defeat? How's the rest of it look? Like a big steaming hunk of poopy. So, uh, not really sure what to do here. I don't really want to pull that engine out. I feel like uh, that's the only way we're going to be able to get anything on it to pry on it. It's got to be torn apart, I'm thinking. I'm sure the starter's no good. I just, I just want to throw in the towel already, Duff, but I don't know. I don't know. Let, me, let me have a sandwich and ponder on it. Speaking of sandwiches, somebody reach out to Molson Coors or whoever bought hams. They're canceling ham special light. Yeah. Does that piss you off, Duff? No more sandwiches. So, I uh, discovered something else. The ring gear is attached to the torque converter like a Mopar. So if we pull the uh, engine out, we're gonna not have a ring gear to pry on or a starter to turn over with. That's the other thing, the starter bolts to the transmission. And uh, yeah, so, and we can't get at the other torque converter bolts, which the torque converter might just slide out with it if we get it out, but we still got no way to fix the starter. So I think we're just gonna pull the whole motor and tranny. So I got the shifter unhooked, cut the exhaust, on both sides and got the tranny mount bolts out. I didn't pull the drive shaft out, but we're just gonna let that flop out because the give a dams are uh, pretty low, aren't they, Jeff, on this one? Not real happy, and uh, I wish I would have killed that cricket when I saw it earlier because now I can't find it and it's driving me insane. So I think we got everything down here. I'm sure we forgot something, but. We're going to go up to the top. What's the engine mount hardware situation look like? Maybe we should get that while we're down here. Those cute little guys there. I'm guessing there's a bolt that goes to the bottom of the frame here. Uh, yeah, check back. We're going to uh, investigate that before we go up top. Oh yeah, this is not a tranny cooler tranny warmer this hose right here goes into the side of the block right above the frost plug that's actually there damn you crickets okay so back on the ground bad news starter doesn't look so hot but I think we can we can work with it you know I mean we haven't torn a starter apart in at least a month Good news is, I found a cricket and smashed him. Bad news is, he's got several buddies lurking around now. And the engine mounts, they went pretty well, didn't they, Duff? Yeah, real good. Wasn't much of the exhaust system there. I think that's both sides. So, now let's uh, get to working on the top stuff. Should we pull the hood off right off the bat, Duff? I think so. Shed a little light on the subject, and since we've got the tranny hooked up to it, probably gonna need all the uh, area we can get. Does this unbolt out of there? That would be sweet. Maybe. I don't know. We're gonna find out. I don't know if that's all gonna sneak up through there. We shall see. All right, hood's coming off.
Oh yeah. The uh, encapsulated nut decided to spin on the bottom bolt on both sides. And that was the strangest foot ever. Like it slides over the top of this whole mechanism. I thought maybe you could unpin it here at the hinges. Oh, don't worry about how I cut two thirds of the way through that hinge. Oh, that little guy. I wouldn't worry about that little guy. Yeah, otherwise you'd have to unbolt the hinges from down there. And uh, I don't want to do that. So it's kind of strange how it slid over the, the top and then, I don't know how to explain it. Anywho, there's a lot more light in here now. That's not a lot of room for activity. It should have been Look at all this floor all space. So Is much aerobics in here. So many activities. Do step class. It's making my head spin how many activities we can do. But at least we got some light. So yeah, I guess we'll start working on accessories and heater hoses and radiator and such. See if we can't get everything snuck out of here. She is stiffer than a wedding, you know what. Oh man. It's not even a flexi hose, so I don't dare cut it. I don't know how many engines I've pulled with these lift plates and I've never ran into an issue where the bolt pattern wasn't there that I needed. Turns out Cadillac's got some oddball, well probably all the Ford jet carburetors. So I guess we're gonna have to drill some more holes in this thing so we can lift it out here. I thought about just throwing a chain around the intake but that just never really pans out so we'll see if we can't Mark some holes out, drill it, and carry on with our lives. It'd be really sweet if I had an extra gasket around, but I don't know why I would have a gasket for one of those, so I'm probably not even going to look. Alright, just one more hang up on this stupid Cadillac. Got our holes drilled out in our carbonator plate. Uh, of course, we didn't get it right the first time, so we had to take the reamer and. Make them a little bit bigger, but she should be good. So let's see if we can sneak it out. Hoping the power steering and manifold clears that brake booster over on that side. And we can get everything snuck up here and clear the rad support. Because if we got to take that rad support off, we could just well take the whole front clip off. And I don't want to get that far into this thing. So, wish me luck. Thought I could hear something uh, running towards the floor drain. Forgot that sliding the yoke out of the back of the tranny would cause a bunch of Caitlyn Jenner fluid to run towards the floor drain. My floor drain identifies as a floor drain. Don't worry Greta, we put a pan under there and I'm sure none of it made it all the way to the floor drain. How dare you! All right, this thing's actually coming out pretty good. I probably just jinxed it. Did forget the wire for temp sender up there. What do we got for oil pressure? Oh hey, there's one right there. That's on hook Q too. Now we should be good. <laughs> Yeah. 
Got a pan under there. We're gonna just let that drain for a while. Looks like we're gonna need some uh, floor dry as well. Also, for anybody pulling a Cadillac engine out, you'll need to remove the uh, radiator support for clearance. Unless you take the transmission off the engine, then it might sneak out of there, but I would recommend uh, clearancing it. Makes life a lot easier. It actually didn't come out of there too awful bad. Make sure you got clearance. Oh yeah, and when I unhooked the shift rod, it was kind of binding. I should have taken the shift rod off on both ends. So, yeah. It was kind of caught in between the kick down linkage and was pulling on that. If anybody wants to get me a longer cherry picker so that I'm not smashing up nice chrome bumpers, that'd be appreciated. Or I guess we could fabric cobble a better one here. She's uh, kind of blowing out on the bottom. She's done a lot of yanking over the years. I'm sure a few of you guys know all about that. All right, back to your regularly scheduled Cadillac things. Well, I've had about enough. Trail of tears go right to where the transfusion stopped. We got her out. And we got a mess. Everywhere. You gonna take care of that? That'd be great. I'm gonna have a sandwich, call it a night. You guys will see me shortly, reinvigorated. Probably not. No, not real enthusiastic about this thing. Not like I was from the start. Well, I mean, I was from the start. Then I got on the trailer and then it was like, mm. Didn't go too bad, I guess. Forgot, I don't know what that wire over there was. Blower motor, is that way over there? That wire and then uh, oil pressure water temp wires and then like I said that throttle shift linkage got bound behind the kick down linkage so you had to unhook it at the column so that it wasn't tweaking that it was kind of rubbing on that booster God, what a bunch of screwed up geometry same thing with the gas pedal runs through the floor up the firewall and then ahead and brake pedal geometry. I can't imagine that would ever bind up. Maybe that's why they parked it. We'll never know. Oh yeah, and look at the inner fender rot on this thing. Oof, uh, it's even on the fender itself. This side too. Almost looks like those inner fenders are part of the fender. It's all one piece. But those are cheap. All right, calling it a night. Cricket is back. Look at that sweet clamp on the antennae. That's like electrical geniosity right there. Any electrical tape on it? No, I don't know. Is this thing power? I doubt it. Power? 55? Bet it had a remote mirror that got broken. I bet the windows don't roll down. You don't want this thing. Because I'm guessing they're electric and I'm sure that electric stuff is working real good after 65 years oh yeah and when I was using this for a template I found out that ugh, those throttle blades are stuck these ones work so I mean primaries that's all you need how many horsepower is the 365 in 1956 like 220 can't imagine they were a real screamer look at him just Freaking loves that thing. Oh yeah, I'm sure there's stuff in the headliner. Didn't have a cricket problem until this thing came in here. How neat is that? Ugh, you are attached, aren't you? Dang it. I bet that was a cool looking seat in the day. Probably legit leather. Yeah, yeah, it's all yours. You can have it. Well, let's rip into this thing, huh, Duff? Tonight's beer sponsor is uh, Rhombus, guys. Got the iconic blonde ale. Some pretty good stuff. Thanks to these guys for reaching out. Put us up with some beer. Because there's only three kinds of beer. Warm beer, cold beer, and free beer. Sometimes they overlap. Should 
Shout out to Rums, guys. Thanks a lot. Oh, and Puddin, you know, he's always hanging out here too. I uh, don't know much about Cadillacs, but we're gonna find out. I think I'm gonna pull the top end off. Then we'll take the transmission off because we're going to have to use the transmission. Well, we have to have the transmission out of the way so we can pry on the ring gear. Otherwise, there's really not a good spot to pry. But this thing's pretty sturdy with the transmission on it. So, while well, we take everything off until we can get in there and check everything out underneath the heads and whatnot, let's, uh, let's leave it on there. It's kind of a paperweight. But, yeah. You want some beer? You get it. Yeah. I know where you're going. Alright. Where's our OJ gloves at? Let's get into this thing. Valve cover off that had the Phillips head screws holding on. I'm trying to think if 235 Chevy's got those. I don't know if we've got a 235 on. Oh, yeah, we've got some great trucks. 216, 235. Tomato, tomato. Since those gasket sets were in the trunk, somebody was clearly planning to tear into this thing. Anyhow, so maybe we'll find something interesting. We'll find something interesting. No matter what. We always do. Ooh. She is sludgy. Not a well cared for engine. Well, shouldn't say that. Oil back then wasn't what it is now. Stuck valves? Valve tester going. Stuck. Stuck. Not. Stuck. Not. Stuck. Stuck. Yeah, that's like three quarters of them. Might as well pull the heads off. You guys knew we were gonna do that anyway. It's not even Mortski starter repair anymore, MSRP. It's like Mortski head removal. Mortski stuck engine world of disappointments. We got intake off. No. Nothing looks too terrible there. A little bit of debris in that one. Too bad here. She's pretty grimy under here. I uh, don't think he made it to St. Louis Park to get his oil changes regularly like he should have. Well, should we pop a head off, Duff? See what's underneath there? I mean, we gotta free up the valves anyway. To heck with starters, we're on to just doing engine teardowns. There's our tranny warmer. Looks like they ran coolant from the engine down the transmission to warm it up when it's cold. Weird, right, Duff? I concur. Let's get this oil line out of the way before we destroy it. Jimmy, did we ever check the dipstick? Oh, my sludginess. 
Looks like there's uh, water to about here. That's not good. No bueno duffel up, I guess. that looks like a valve. I think those will clean up. I mean, not good. And then it is a Victor gasket. So somebody's been in here one other time. It's a replacement gasket, I guess, is what I'm saying or assuming. I don't think those look bad. We'll get the old suckomatic shop vac. Clean those up. Save that just in case the yeah, we're gonna use that again. Let's be honest. I'm not gonna waste a set of perfectly good head gaskets on this thing. It's no good. Yeah, a little bit of ridge, not bad. Let's pull the other side apart. Well, let's take bets on how many valves are stuck on this side. I'm gonna say five out of the eight. Place your bets now. Winner gets a pat on the back from themselves. I guess if all else fails, we get some sweet Cadillac script valve covers and a Batwing air cleaner for the collection. Well, this side wasn't as chewy inside the valve cover. Here we go. One for one, two for two, uh, two out of three, two out of four, three out of six, four out of seven, uh, I already lost. Shoot. Only three of them are stuck. I'll drink to that. If you're dealing with rusty junk, never mind, Craftsman sucks now, but when Craftsman was good, you could get these. I don't even know what they call them, but they're for uh, taking stripped out hardware out. Extractors, I suppose. They work real good. Walked her right out of there. Easy peasy, a lemon squeezy. It's not gonna be good. Is that what you're telling me? Got way less stuck valves on the other side. Tiffany, a Tiffany, a Tiffany, had a Tiffany. We should make a tool to uh, clamp on the front of the crankshaft like we did on the Mopars. So here's what we come up with. I rounded it off a little bit more. And I took my hole saw, stuck a hole through it. And then I had this uh, gray Canadia 22 millimetric socket. I don't know why I would ever need that. So I welded that in there just off kilter. The Mordski stuck engine rotational device. It's not as cool as the MVP, the Mordski valve puller, but maybe it's the same bolt pattern as a Mopar. Doubt it. Let's get these cylinders cleaned up and uh, run a dingle ball hole through there. Well, just a hole in. We don't have a dingle ball one for this, probably. I know we don't. Let's see what happens. 
bring this thing into the old Morsky machine shop. You're upright. Was, uh, cleaned up pretty well actually. Now I think we make an adapter. Let's go on the front of the crank. Let's see what we gotta do to loosen these things up. If we gotta just root strength or give her some heat. Smash on them with a piston adjuster. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Well, you would never believe it, but looks like this bolt pattern on the old Mopar adapter kit is the same as this. Five out of six, anyway. Either Mopar had one oddball, probably not. I probably just drilled it really crappily. No, Mopar probably had one offset one, so it only go on there one way. Let's, uh, Stab this on there. You don't think this is gonna work? Worked on Monica. You don't think it's gonna work on Elvis here? What do you think, Duff? We need more heat or hammerage? We need a. Yeah. I like your idea. No more messing around with big dog in it now. She's a haze in here. Cheech and Chong made me proud. Oh, wow. All right. So we're gonna leave this thing soaking some marble overnight. And hopefully tomorrow, come back at it. And just freeze right up. Huh, Duff? It doesn't really look that bad in there. Just can't get her to spin. Stinking cataract. All right. See you guys tomorrow. I don't know if the Marvel is good that it sat in there overnight in the cylinders we put it in. Well, not all of them. This cylinder, which is the one I thought was the most stuck, judging by the amount of pitting on the piston, that one drained down. The other ones, the rings seem to be doing their job, huh, Duffers? So now I don't know what we do. I guess we're going to have to clean that oil out of there if we're going to start whaling on things. I guess, uh, I don't know what to do. Kind of at a loss here. We gave it heat. Been prying on it. I guess we're just going to have to keep beating on it. It'd be cool if you could put like a slug in there and then just hit her with the air hammer. Without ruining anything. I like air hammers. I just like hammers in general. They're just an all around great tool, aren't they, Duff? All right. Try to figure out what we're going to do here. Oh. 
Oh yeah! Oh no! What's turning? This thing ain't moving. What do you break the snow on the crank? Or is it just the uh, harmonic balancer turning? Keyway. I bet we broke the keyway. We're gonna find out here shortly. Yep. Ah, oh, son of a biscuit. Broke the keyway right out of that sucker. Now we're in trouble. Dang it. I can't believe that broke. Now what are we gonna do, Duff? Split the tranny and pry on the ring gear? Just can't win with these stuck engines lately. Need some more flatheads, right? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna pop this tranny off. See if that helps. We got the transfusion split from the bell housing on the engine. Here's where the plot thickens. This thing doesn't have a flex plate on it. Well, I suppose that's called a flex plate, but it doesn't have a ring gear on said flex plate. It's built on the torque converter, and I can't get the torque converter to just slide out of the tranny like they usually do. I mean, it's free, but I don't want to come out, so I don't know if I take all those perimeter bolts out if then maybe I can get that ring gear to come out of there and then we can bolt that to the back of the engine I don't know I mean worst case scenario we can make an adapter to bolt to the back of this to try to turn it over with but that's gonna be a big old hunk of steel to do that so I guess blast those out hopefully we can get a ring gear on here so we can pry in here this thing was stuck just tighter than snot on these alignment dowels which is, I guess, what they're supposed to do, but I've never seen a tranny where the torque converter doesn't slide out of the transmission, so I don't know. I'm guessing those transmissions are scrap iron in most applications anyway, unless you are restoring a Cadillac. I think all the hot rod guys put three or four speeds behind these things, even five-speed overdrives. Did a little research, and yeah, Flywheels for manual transmission are pretty hard to come up with. You can buy replacements from like wheel cap and speed gems, but they charge pretty penny for them. So if anybody's got a flywheel for a 331, 365, 390 Cadillac, hit me up because I am interested, provided I can make a Cadillac engine run. I do have another one if we can't get this one running, but I don't have a lot of faith in that one either. All right, let's get back at it. Let's see if we can't wreck some more stuff. Duff has abandoned me. He said uh, he can't watch anymore. To be honest, I'm surprised you guys are still here. Is 11 o'clock in the morning too early for a sandwich? Hey, if you haven't heard, they're not making sandwiches anymore. Uh, so reach out to Molson Coors or Coors Molson and tell them Bring back Ham's Special Light. This is unacceptable. Reach out to your local politicians as well. Unacceptable. We're gonna have to find a new sandwich brand, apparently. <sighs> What's this world coming to? Can't even get good, cheap beer anymore. Okay. Back at it. Cadillac things. Well, so I guess I should tell you what I did. I just pried the bell housing far enough apart where I could get in here with a quarter inch ratchet and then got those two bolts off the flex plate so that I could slide it off the bottom two we could get at so that's how I got it split it works probably pried a little bit on that flex plate that wasn't good for it oh well I'm new, I don't know what to do. I'm new! I'm new, I don't know what to do! There's a 
block of wood duff. Oh boy. That's a dumb idea. Abandon ship. One of the worst oil spills in U.S. history. That's a good one. There's one that won't go. It's spinning. This Cadillac is hurting my brain cells. Can't get in there to hold over the wrench. Can't get in there with a welder to weld it. Kind of want to cut it off with the torch. If I do it with the grinder, I might scar up that flex plate, which I think will be fine. Well, I got that one remaining nut halfway off by using a vice grip to hold the stud and then a ratcheting wrench to get it off. But then once it got to the point where I galled up, the threads didn't go no more. So we got the death wheel off. There's like 463 bolts holding this on, so. 462 will be just fine. We all the oil's out. We got some more for dry, I guess. Oh, what the French? Well, if you ever wanted to know what the inside of a torque converter looks like, that's where hopes and dreams are smashed. Maybe that's not even the torque converter. This is, a, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Let's just push this off to the side and worry about the heart and soul of this Cadillac. Not so much the magic maker here. Got some new hardware, hopefully we can just bolt this half of the torque converter back onto the flex plate. And we can pry on that to turn this thing over. Let's be honest though, nothing's ever that easy. So we got our ring gear bolted on to our flex plate. Usually I like to pry right between the ring gear and off of this alignment dowel, but as you can see, it's spaced quite a ways back. So that's not ideal. Oh, and look at that. There was a drain plug right in this torque converter. We could have drained that all out into a pan instead of all over the floor. Sorry, Greta. How dare you? Oh, sweet. It's uh. Missing a tooth on the ring gear already, or even started South Dakota things. I'm on milk. This thing just is fighting us every step of the way. I thought we really had it when uh, it was turning over on the front harmonic balancer, but no, I had to bust the keyway. Well, let's see what we can figure out here. That's no good. Oh, also no good. That's a lot of water. And oil. And that's, that's uh... Not what I thought we would see. Well, I mean, that's what I knew we would see in there. So what do they call that when you're looking for a person? You know, when you're looking for them and they're alive, and then uh, it just goes to a recovery after that and whatnot? You're just hoping to find the body. I think that's what we got going on here. I mean, we found the body, but uh, I don't think it's a revival anymore. It's a, it's an inspection. Like uh, at the morgue, they tell you why you died. I think we know why it died. It's because they parked it in a damp building for 50, three years, two years, whatever. And just because I can't wrestle this thing on the floor very well, and I don't want to smash my toes in my wingtip shoes, I think we're going to put this thing in an engine stand. That's right. 
I don't know that we've seen it on the channel before, but I do have an engine stand. So I'm gonna kind of organize my mess here and have the cherry picker on this son of a biscuit. Put our adapter on the back for the engine stand and throw her up in there and pull the bottom end apart and see what we got. Maybe try to knock some of the pistons out and yeah. I don't know. We're just we're just taking stuff apart at this point. Maybe we'll get it loose and back together. I mean, we really haven't screwed anything up too bad yet. I mean, we screwed up a lot of stuff, but I, mean, I think it would run again. We know we're missing a tooth on this. We don't know if the starter even works. Let's. All right. I'm done talking. Back to work. What a ginormous mess. We still got heads to do. That's still oil? No, no, that's water running out. Well, let's see just how bad it is inside the pan. We got water. And uh, it's got some uh, sludgy sludge behind it. In front of it, maybe? I don't know. Oh yeah, that's some Flint, Michigan stuff there. Look at that prepared two pans this time. A little uh, milkshakey. Yeah, moment of truth. Oh my sludge. Wow. Goodness gracious. Look at that build up at the bottom of the pan. That's why we couldn't get anything to come out when we pulled the plug. It's just all sludgy, oh, cakiness, just running out. That's what happens when you uh, never change your oil. I don't know, some guys would blame it on a brand of oil. My grandpa despised Penn's oil, but other people swear by it. That's a lot of sludge. I wonder if we can get that off of there and try to keep some of that sludge from going back in the engine like it's doing right now. Everything else looks okay-ish, but I'm guessing that sludge built up in that oil pump didn't help the bearings any. And they did say they parked this thing because it was an oil burner or it had a spare engine in the shed where this come from because this engine was no good that's why all the rods look like they're there you know well, those aren't hanging through the side of the block so that's a plus Let's see if we can get that oil pump off so here's your oil pump on the bottom of the engine it's usually driven by the distributor which is driven by the camshaft sure enough there's your distributor lines up with that this is your pickup, it sucks in the oil from the bottom of the oil pan, pushes it through the engine. The way it pushes it through the engine on these, see that line right there. And you can see where that line connects to the oil pump, either broke off or rotted off. So I don't know if that happened before they parked this thing or after they were sitting. I'm guessing it was after it was sitting because there was water in the bottom of that thing. And that uh, water probably either corroded this and weakened it or froze and broke it. Either way, not good. So we're going to need an oil pump, even if we do get this thing turned over. And like I said, I got another engine, but I'm not going to tear it apart for a used oil pump. And I'm guessing oil pumps for these things are like unobtainium. Oh yeah, look at the whole housing on the bottom of that thing is just all 
rusted and bought oh man I don't know if this thing's worth uh, digging into anymore I mean it's definitely a good core well not definitely but there's a chance because that's the other thing is when these freeze plugs froze out did it crack the block we don't know has it been bored before we don't know can we get away with just boring it out or do we have to sleeve cylinders we don't know so I think that's uh, pretty much going to conclude the Cadillac here. I'm definitely not going to put an oil pump in this thing. I mean, not to put back in that car. And then we still got to go through the heads. We got new head gaskets and intake gaskets laying around, but we don't have oil pan gaskets. And we still got to find a harmonic balancer because I hosed that one up. My bad. Carburetors froze up. Got to fix that. I don't know if that transfusion works or not. I mean, the fluid looked okay in it. But this thing is just, she's too far gone. There's too many questionable items. Plus it needs brakes, floors are gone. What can I say? We gave her a whirl. Barn find Cadillac. How many times do you come across those, especially being pink, 56, with them beautiful Dagmars up front. <laughs> so, I think that's the nail in the coffin. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, it doesn't matter to get it done, as long as you're having fun. Getting it out of that barn was pretty fun. But the rest of this stuff has not been fun. Silly Cadillacs. Okay. What a freaking mess we got here. We should at least pressure wash this off and clean the goop up since we're this close. Everybody loves a good pressure washing video. doing so much cleaning Duff said to pull the valley pan off valley pan don't look so bad she's uh she's a little ripe inside of said valley pan so I think we're gonna wash that out a bit too good bad or otherwise I'm guessing that's the uh, identification number I never looked up to see what that means because let's be honest nobody really cares look at that cute little delco remy tag on the distributor these earlier ones you could actually grease them put a little oil inside that cap oops your bearings in your distributor and here is the issue there's our oil pump roll out that side cover all out there and the weird thing is, I didn't see those pieces in the oil pan, so. Gone forever. Look at that a little fiber washer in between the pickup tube and the oil pump. Crazy what they got away with. And uh, yeah, when you put something away for a long time, that's how you drain your coolant from your block. <clears throat> <coughs> Just pull that plug out there and coolant comes out. Or just let it blow out the freeze plug. That works too.